Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Your heart will your head does not know. Deal with Deborah is to become a speaker yourself, a speaker of the word of God. He said, let the weak say that I am strong. See, let the poor say I'm rich. You see, whatever it is that you're dealing with, there is something that you can do because there is a power. Uh, Deborah is in your head, but the Holy Ghost is in your heart. And so, don't ever forget that you've got the Holy Ghost in your heart. Your not in your head, but what's in your heart. If God can get it into your heart, he can get it into your life. Because out of the heart come the issues of your life. If, if you will notice something in, uh, in Genesis chapter 3, I want you to notice Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I want you to notice this. I know most of you have read this before. You've read the book of Genesis before you got over into the genealogies and got discouraged from reading your Bible. <laughs> you fell off the wagon, but you probably made it to Genesis chapter 3. But I want you to notice Genesis chapter 3. Look at verses 1 through 5 here. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said that you shall not eat of, the, of the, every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree, the fruit of the, the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it lest you die. And then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. He is Deborah talking to her. For God knows that in the day that you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so notice he's just talking to her. He's just talking to her. You see, the serpent would have been powerless had he not opened his mouth. But he opened his mouth. One of the curses of the serpent that came on the serpent is that he lost his voice. A serpent has no voice. All they can do is pss. All they can do is hiss. Part of that curse was saying, you have been a speaker saying the wrong things against the will of God. I'll take your voice. I will take your voice. And he lost his voice because he abused it. You lose when you abuse. Whatever you abuse, you will eventually lose. Whatever you abuse, you will eventually lose. And so he lost it. But remember Mark eleven twenty three, 23, it says, he will have whatever he says. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. He'll have what he said. You will have whatever you say. She'll have whatever she said. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. But death and life are in the power of the tongue. You know what James chapter 1, verse 19 says? Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Slow to wrath. And if you're not careful, the words of another can keep you from doing what God has called you to do. They really can. I'm going to give you five things that Deber does when he speaks. Five things that Deber does when he speaks. Number one, he infuses doubt and questions truth. He infuses doubt and questions truth. Has God not said? He starts throwing questions in your mind. He, he gets you to, before there is a rebellion against authority, there is always a questioning of authority. Before he gets you to go against the written word, he starts you to question. Well, I don't, I don't understand why he said that we shouldn't have sex before marriage. I mean, if I love him, he love me. I don't see nothing wrong with our expressing. How could that be wrong? They start asking questions about what he said. So he infuses doubt and questions truth. 
infuses doubt, and he questions truth. It can be something that God told you plainly that he was going to do in your life, through your life, or to your life, and he will do something inevitably to, to infuse doubt and to question truth because he, re, uh, remember again, one of the biggest tools that he uses are obstacle illusions, obstacle illusions. And you'll have an obstacle put in the way, and, and, and then he'll say, well, if God was really in this, you wouldn't be having such a hard time. Which Bible has he been reading? The last that I checked, Psalm 34, 19 says, many, many are the afflictions of the r r righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. It means that you might go through a whole lot of stuff, but the thing you go through, God says, I will deliver you out of it. Smooth seas never made good sailors. It's only when the water becomes topsy-turvy that God makes you a masterful sailor able to circumnavigate the waters. So he infuses doubt and questions truth by obstacle illusions. Number two, he confuses our identity. He confuses our identity, Deborah, when he begins to speak. He confuses our identity. See, before the devil can get you to sin, he has to first cause you to forget who you are and whose you are. Amen. So he must confuse your identity. Now you don't know who you are. If you, if you know clearly who you are, he can't get you to misbehave. Amen. I guarantee you, when people are out doing sinful things, they are not thinking about the fact that they're a pastor that they are Sunday school teacher, that they are missionary. Uh, you know, they, they are not thinking about the fact that they are deacon at that time. I, I guarantee you he makes them forget who they are. Uh, they are not thinking about the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm blood bought, that I'm a fire baptized believer. He has to make you forget who you are in order to get you to misbehave. They, they make you lose your identity. That's what happens when your children get around the wrong crowd. They forget who they are. You know how certain people, uh, married folks, know what, what it means for their partner to have selective memory. You know, there are certain things that they can remember like an elephant. And there are other things, it's like, don't you remember the other day and I told you? And I know like, I, 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 I have no recollection of that. Are you sure you told me? You, you sure you're talking to me? Are you sure I was there? And they have what's called selective memory. Well, see, when your children misbehave, when God's children misbehave, they have lost the identity, their self-concept that they are the children of God. See, he has to make you think that you are a carnal being. An dog. Hey, hey, what's up, dog? <laughs> and to manifest the thing that you feel like at the time. You don't always feel like what you are. So you can be deceived by your feelings. There can be a woman that might be pregnant with child, but in the first few weeks, she does not feel pregnant. Amen. Come on. When she's pre if, she got, if a woman got pregnant last night, she doesn't feel pregnant today, but she is. She doesn't feel it, but she is. You may not always feel like a child of God, but you is. <laughs> and if he can get you to feel like you are something that you are not and, and carry on manifest another identity. So you can't manifest a demonic identity when you are possessed with a God identity. So he confuses our identity, number two. Number three, he espouses contrary doctrine. He espouses contrary doctrine doctrine. 
contrary doctrine. And you just notice what, what Deber spoke here to this woman, telling her that, uh, that, that, that he said that you will not surely die. That was contrary. God says the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. Now, he is now espousing contrary doctrine. If you do this, nothing is going to happen. It's amazing. The world has fallen victim of day beer, thinking that we can live any kind of way and we will not die. But the word of the Lord is still true that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Amen. Something dies in you when you walk outside of the will of God. Death is not cessation. Death is separation. And your sin will separate you from God. I don't care who you are. Your sin will separate you from God. You cannot live any kind of way and still walk with God. You cannot run with devils and walk with God at the same time. Your sin will separate you from God. Death is separation. It is separation. And the Lord spoke to them and clearly said, the day that you disobey me, something in you dies. That day, something dies. And the devil gave them contrary doctrine and said, you shall not surely die. Everybody's doing it. Go ahead and do it. See, nothing is happening to them. The thing that they didn't realize God was talking about you remember in the Green Mile, dead man walking, dead man walking? I cannot tell you how many dead men and women are walking around thinking that they have tricked God, living in rebellion to his word and his will. Dead man walking, dead man walking, dead man walking. Still got life, but dead man walking. Walking around in a body, but their soul is distant so far from God. They, 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 don't, they don't have any peace when they go to bed at night. They, they, they're somehow tormented that no matter how much of the drugs and the sex and the money and the promotions and the power and the position that they get, something is never, ever satisfied in them. <clears throat> they never get enough. There's too much greed in them, never satisfied. They have insatiable appetites. And they wonder why they get on top of the world and then end up killing themselves because they are separated and they are looking for a life and a peace that does not consist in the abundance of things but it comes as a result of a relationship with a king number four when Deborah speaks he deceives he deceives the ultimate things of many demonic spirits that don't feel evil is ultimately to deceive you. Come right this way. Come. Oh no, just give me your hand. I, I, see, de I see beautiful things happening to you. A and not everything that is evil looks evil nor feels evil because its purpose is to win your trust so that they can deceive you. And so what the devil does is that he mixes truth with a lie. He'll tell you something that is partly true, but there's a lie that is mixed with it. He was telling them that, you know, this was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He was telling them the truth that he knows that you should be as God because you'll be able to know the difference between good and evil. But what he wasn't telling them is that they were walking in rebellion against God because God was their discernment. And now they were getting a tree to replace what God himself was for them.